good enough with the 240 so I might also return down to the workshop to the grinder or uh, you know go back to the to the to the ceramic rod but let's see how's that huh So all these kind of details are important for, to maximize, you know, the experience of the knife. And that's it. Basic shape of the wolf put in place. I already prepared the grinding the bevels, heat treatment, fitting the scales shaping the the handle and etc you will you will see if you will follow so as i said now on to making the holes for the pins we'll use the measurement tool which again i don't know the english word but I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it some divider to equally divide uh, the holes, center punch, and that's it. Uh, the thing is, as each one, it's unique. I don't have the template that I could simply glue onto, so I will basically take the thinnest part of the knife of the handle, measure it, so 2.2 uh, two centimeters and six millimeters, put it on. 1.3 so at half simply measure not sure if that will be seen but yeah so, so obviously this is the half part and i will take the same one like here so you can see i have my marks for the for the first pin i typically like to punch it in over here somewhere close to the finger groove so let's do that that's it and now of course I will put three pins plus the lanyard hole so I mean the knife will be knife uh, will look nice if that will be equally spaced so let's measure it i mean don't get totally crazy to the microns because nobody will notice but yeah try to be as precise as possible so this is 9.6 so divided by 3 that would be 3.3.2 take our divider so let's see what we did here 3.2 but i think i actually messed up something as i will need more pins or not so you can see now my scribe marks so pin number one pin number two pin number three lanyard hole perfect I mean in my eyes if you don't like yeah you can always opt for something else measure now this one the last uh, should be 3.2 and here typically I don't go too crazy my um, lanyard hole is 8 millimeters so I want to have that half of that plus some meat so I would say I will 
don't really hear about whole one centimeter or 1.2 centimeters from the from the end. So you can see I you can see I have my spaces equally here. The the ones in between I will not go too crazy about the measurements, but you will see the more you work with this stuff the more you will develop the you know the feel and again you can see they're quite nicely equally spaced and yeah now to drilling the holes so <laughs> It's harder to prepare the recording setup than it is to to actually you know do the the stuff for the knife. But let's see how that goes. are drilled with a 6.1 now we have to drill the end hole for the lanyard which is eight millimeters as we said 8.1 just to make sure everything goes nice very in very nicely so I hope this is shown Um, so important stuff tapering of the point equal if we take a look the the geometry you can see it's quite spot on this all this it's quite nice geometric you know um, equalness here the middle is nailed nicely this when I take the, the edges off, put in the, the file, the filing, it will look even nicer. The important thing is this is not so important to have it made, you know, totally cleaned up and everything because now knife goes into the heat treatment. After that, there is some cleaning up. Maybe the knife will bend a little bit. So I need to or maybe reshape some parameters but as uniform and as you know equals looking from side to side you make it now the less chance that knife will deform because still when you heat it up and if one side is thicker or thinner or you know has a different shape it will tend to bend into one uh, way or another 
Um, so even this for this, this face is important. As I said, not so important for the finished look, but you know, to prevent issues at the heat treatment. So what I do before the heat treatment is I take off the edges. So there is even less chance of, of breaking. Um, a little bit about the grinding process. What I used is uh, 40 grits or it's 39. I'm not sure, ceramic belt. This one is already used one, because, but because I tend or like to take as much material off as possible before heat treatment, this is how I can use all my belts, you know, completely. So typically the new belt, the, 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 the lower grit will be used for um, final flattening of the heat treated knife, you know, making sure all my flats are really, <laughs> well, flat. Um, I will use them for flattening of the, you know, handle material, um, whether it is antler or, or wood because the um, let's say the newer it is the the belt of course more uniform and nicely it will take off material so this way um i mean it's quite important also that because those belts cost a fortune so yeah you you have to take care of your expenses my pins already prepared cut to length how do, what's the English word? Uh, chamfered or, you know, the edges taken off. So all that's ready. Filing in the hole and then uh, into the heat treat. What I didn't mention yesterday, heat treatment I always do in the evening or let's say, yeah, evening or night when it's dark outside so I can really see the colors of the, of the metal. Of course, I'm not expert on, you know, this is like a, a cherry red of, I don't know, June cherry or July cherry or whatever. But it's important for me to understand that that um, steel is ready for quench. And I will also show you, um, you know, like, a, let's call it poor man's way of checking the, the, if, the if the steel has been hardened. So this one easy, round file, vice and a little, a little bit of practice. So you see nothing to it, a little bit of workout, but you can see maybe it's interesting. Already here it's quite nailed, you know that it's quite equal. Um, as I said, once the knife is heat treated, I will work on these details a little bit. I don't get crazy, you know, up to the micron, but you know, if it's like uh, equal on both sides, looks adds a little bit of class. Some people ask, what's the reason for this? Honestly, for me, it's more or less the separation of the specific parts of the knife. I believe it adds to the to the look and feel of the knife. Um, yeah, that's that. Uh, my view of how the knife should look. On the smaller knives, I will make the hole smaller, and on the bigger ones, bigger. But I think it's quite nice. And even now, you can feel a little bit that power. Of, of the wolf, um, yeah, 4.5 millimeters. What I will also do is I typically leave the spine um, and the sides at, at 90 degrees. Uh, just, uh, yeah. Well, I will not say why, so please do put into the comments why do you think I leave this edge sharp? Okay, maybe one day we make a uh, like a ruffle, and uh, the ones who who make the proper answer, maybe we give some discount or something.
Now just to give you an example, what does it look like? So when you file on the unheated, unheat treated steel or you can, you can hear the difference. So, roughly profiled handle, now we take it off and uh, we shape this part, <coughs> so these are the two that I'm currently working on. You saw me taking off the, the dust collector because it started to throw sparks, so <laughs> Of course, I don't want to, to have a fire in that, so be careful. So I'll just... I just remember to knock off the edges as I have the the 40 grid on so it takes material off faster um, maybe you can see no gaps and if you remember when I mentioned um, in the in the beginning of the video or no it was the previous video try to make everything as flat as possible and it will pay dividends later on also one important thing you can see everything is eyeballing so each knife i can i, I see as a, a little bit of you know special um, unique uh, a little bit of artistic stuff in it So here you can see the vinegar buff. Of course, it will not be that dark because there's a, <clears throat> a layer of vinegar that is stuck on the knife. Once I um, clean it up, it will be a little bit lighter, but yeah, that's the thing. There are two, so the reason doing that, if you research on your own a little bit, uh, you will see that there are um, two ways that metal will oxidize, so it's red and black. Red is the one we don't like, black is the one we think it's cool, so yeah, that will be the black one. This patina will prevent a little bit of rust on your knife. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you can leave the knife in the, in the, what's it called, in the water. So it will, then it will rust nonetheless. So, let's see what happened in the coffee. So far, um, because, you know, it's not the exact uh, science, so if hasn't been etched enough we will repeat so uh, but yeah you can see I mean it's 
all black it's like crazy but now take a look once i because i want to clean that maybe somebody will leave it on but the the thing is if, if you leave too thick of a layer on it um eventually with time it will it will get off you know it will peel off like everything that is too thick but uh, what i like is this patina to stay on and not to get uh, not, not peel off chip yeah so chip off if it's too thick it will chip of course you know like anything but i think we are already close and i already kind of like how it looked so you can see a bunch of paper towels are used um, so you, you saw what i took out of the coffee and you see where we are at now so i think it should go in for a little bit longer but uh, it's getting there the parts i like to keep as they are because i always loved vintage stuff so here you know it's just you know that uniform polish kind of stuff i don't like so that's the thing so it goes back on to gluing the scales so something to mix No gaps, everything cleaned up nicely. Now the thing, so you can see if I want to clean that up, everything smears. So what I want to do now is open this up so you can see, hopefully, this. can see it's the whole different story and again if you're not making patinated blades it's no issue but if you make them then these little things come in handy so that one's done it will give you the idea I'll go on and make glue the other one but don't need to bother you with that So it's been now, I think, more than 12, 15 hours. We will take this apart. So. <laughs> but it's no big deal. So this one. I will grind off, make it flat, shape this with this one. I'm still not sure, but probably I will use my high speed rotary tool and uh, just take it off so that I disturb as little as possible the structure of the of the antler. So First of all, now I have to get this back. 
as there will be some grinding and uh, <laughs> taking good care about this during the glue up I wouldn't want to mess it up now during the grinding phase or let's say the finalization there will be some abrasive is that correct abrasive actions um, so see should be <clears throat> it's always great to look under the different angles at the light so you can really see the potential issues so now now we will go to the grinder um, yeah so what do we need to do now need to knock off a little bit this and Put a little bit of, um, sorry, taking out a little bit of the edge. And that's it. Say it's enough so the moment of truth I'm just realizing that I don't have any brush to clean this antler so I will have that I will have to do that up in the house upstairs sorry but oh man i love this so far there are already some dark bladers in the world which i think really like these knives and i'm pretty sure there will be some wows happening right now this this becomes part of you it's the extension of the arm the feel is just next level i love how this turned out so next sharpening so now i first have to make a The primary edge so the cutting edge i don't know actually never whether that's primary or secondary but i don't care really so i need to create the cutting edge i will use uh, probably better to use the new 120 just to make sure 
the blade doesn't heat up um and the great stuff about the the variable speed grinder is you know you can make it go really slow and really do the precise work here because now we are getting even though you know the knife has some imperfections which are mostly for the uh, you know visual appeal but now you know with the cutting edge you don't you don't screw up so So you can see quite nice and even without the um, jigs or anything. As I said, I want to learn, I want to get the feel in my hands for the, for the tools. Because at the end of the day, nobody can take away your skills or knowledge. So, burr is there. I think that's it. So our wolves now really got sharp, sharp teeth. So now knock off the burr. Let's see how that goes. My small ceramic rod that I mentioned about, this was a <laughs> bigger one that came with one of the knives that I bought years ago. Of course, clumsy as I am, dropped it on the floor and what ceramic does? When dropped, yeah. exactly what you see here. So, but anyway, what I'm doing is just refining the edge. So. I have a bunch of um, whetstones, but I figured out that this is just as good as that, it just makes everything faster, less messy. So now here, again, a belt, waist belt, you know, for your pants, glued on, on some flat wood, and just finalize you will see you will feel it sticking which means you still have to go on you know just a simple way of understanding where you are in in the process of refining the edge sometimes i will um I will note that I didn't, you know, um, go good enough with the uh, 240, so I might also return down to the workshop, to the grinder, or, uh, you know, go back to the, to the, to the ceramic rod, but let's see. How's that, huh? 
no no um no teeth nice smooth cut for the bushcraft knife so there you go antler 